Hello, everyone. I'm Deb McBride, and welcome to the Golden Astrologer Podcast. Today is September 8th, Sunday, and I am broadcasting from lovely Escazú, Costa Rica, where we are having a lovely evening. And we are having some wonderfully intense astrology right now. So let's get started. Uh, You'll remember that from last week, there are four planets currently in the sign of Virgo. And one by one, each of these planets, which are the inner planets, are going to meet with each of the middle and outer planets. Now, this is a fascinating little journey because every one of the inner planets, starting with the moon on the new moon day that we had on August 30th, have been greeting each of the planets from Jupiter on out. So think of it this way. There's sun, there's Mercury, there's Venus, there's Mars, and then there's the moon, of course, which moves very quickly. The other four don't move as quickly as the moon. The moon moved through Virgo in two days. So the moon sort of paved the way. The new moon paved the way. But what happened was each planet is making one aspect, you know, at a time to each of the outer planets, not necessarily in the order that they are in the heavens, but they are making fascinating progress one by one. And because each of them is taking a turn with each of the outer planets, we are feeling a progression of events in our lives that relates to all of this. So before the new moon, the planets were all starting to trine Uranus. So Uranus has been at six degrees of Taurus, which is an earth sign. And naturally, planets and earth signs like Virgo are going to trine planets and earth signs like Taurus. Okay, so Uranus and Taurus. So what happened was the new moon happened and... They were at six degrees and they went trying to Uranus and then moved on from there. So everybody, starting with Venus actually, because Venus started doing this a few days before the new moon, Venus has been leading the pack. Venus trines Uranus, then the sun and the moon tried Uranus, then Mercury trined Uranus, then Mars trined Uranus. You know, they've all been doing their turn, trining Uranus, okay? A trine is a very smooth flowing aspect. So everybody is talking to the god of uh, brilliance, genius, unexpected events, and, uh, you know, the, where we can uproot and change something. And Uranus is kind of like the magician, you know, it's a, it's a magical planet in many ways. Like you can have a miracle with Uranus. You can have miracles with Jupiter too, but Uranus, if like you focus your energy wisely, you can really play your cards in in this magical way. So that was the first aspect. Then each planet started to talk to, um, uh, Saturn, um, because Saturn was has been at 14 and now has gone to 13 because it's been retrograde. So everybody trying to Saturn. So first there's a trine to Uranus, which is in Taurus. Then there's a trine to Saturn, which is in Capricorn. So another trine, which is another flowing aspect. Very lovely. Saturn is the planet of discipline and duty and focus and hard work. So maybe you made some effort and you're starting to acknowledge how you are uh, receiving benefits from that e- effort. You know, we've been dealing a lot with Saturn being a stressful planet in these last weeks and months. And, you know, the eclipses were intense with Saturn and with Pluto. But, you know, now we get to see some progress. So now when Venus trines Saturn and then the Sun trines Saturn, and so everything has been taking its time and taking its turn one by one. So like the other day, Thursday, Mercury trines Saturn. Then the sun trines Saturn. Then, you know, we're not quite where Mars is yet. Mars is going to trine Saturn tomorrow. So then they each trine Saturn. Then here comes the magic. Jupiter and Neptune are in an opposition. So each of these planets is going to go one by one, squaring the opposition, making a T-square. A T-square is like a three-legged table. So Uranus um, first, then Saturn, then Jupiter and Neptune, which are opposite each other. So then first we had Venus. So Venus 
made those squares last week. She squared Jupiter on Monday the 2nd and then opposed Neptune on Wednesday the 4th. Now, here's where things get interesting. Because the trines are simple and flowing and lovely, squares and oppositions are not necessarily. They're more of a stressful aspect or a hard, what we call hard aspects. And so they enforce more work. They enforce more effort. They enforce more uh, taking action. And they sometimes impose themselves on us like, ah, okay, well, I have to do something about that. Or, hey, I got information. Wow. So something was presented to you and has been presented to each and every one of us from the square to Jupiter, the opposition to Neptune. So everybody's going to do this. They're going to make the square to Jupiter and then oppose Neptune. And each one, Venus, then the sun, then Mercury, all of them, or sometimes the Mercury sun, you know, one starts to speed up. It was the sun first. Now Mercury's kind of pulled ahead of the sun. And so Mercury goes in and makes the square to Jupiter and opposes Neptune. So now we have this you know, new piece of information. Because if we got some information from Venus entering that T-square, then, and making a T-square, then that's part one. Then we each have part two. And, and all along, it's part one, part two. So first, Venus trined Uranus. Okay, what was the information you got from that? Then there was the new moon trying Uranus. What was the information you got from that? And then in each piece of this puzzle... And I hope you're keeping a journal because each piece of this puzzle has been growth oriented, fascinating, door opening, enlightening. You know, Jupiter and Neptune are are light and lightning and magical. And they are they both relate to one another. They both rule Pisces. Jupiter ruled Pisces before Neptune was discovered. And so they're co-rulers of Pisces. And Neptune is more the illusion-oriented, uh, you know, nether regions of the cosmos planet, whereas Jupiter is more about abundance and openness and, um, you know, opening your eyes and opening your heart and embracing abundance, embracing something. So maybe you opened your eyes to something this week, past week, and then Mercury with Venus, and then you opened your eyes a little more with Mercury. And today, the sun squared Jupiter. So today, the 8th at 1127 a.m. Eastern time, which is 930 a.m. or so, 927 a.m. Costa Rica time, we experience the sun squaring Jupiter. And... All of the planets are going to do this little dance. Each one is going to take its turn. So every inner planet touches every outer planet. And finally, till it trines Pluto at the end of Capricorn, and then it moves on. So today, the sun squared Jupiter. And it's going to reach that opposition with Neptune on Tuesday. So right now, we're in it. The sun, the enlightenment, the life force, the brightness, the sunlight, the shining, the flashlight in the darkness. There it is. What happened today when it's squared Jupiter? There's been a lot of information flying. Have you experienced a lot of energy? I sure have. You know, the last couple days, the information that's coming at me has been really powerful and intense. And, you know, I can't share a lot of it because some of it is confidential uh, and some of it is personal. But, and some of it is so far out that it doesn't make sense for me to uh, share it. But I can tell you this, it's, you know, unusual, it's enlightening. I feel, you know, that this information that we're all getting, we need to pay attention because we're getting messages because we're getting enlightening information. We have to pay attention and sort of open to it. So Mercury was opposing Neptune yesterday, so it reached that part of the t-square did the dive into the t-square and today mercury trying pluto or it's going to try and pluto in about a half an hour and when it trines pluto that'll be the finishing point it's going to move on do other things but each planet has been really busy with what's what's happening in virgo like each it's interesting that they've all lined up one at a time and it's like they each take a dive into the pool and do the same swimming routine so they're like 
it's, it's not really synchronized swimming. It's like they're a team and they each have to do an exercise. And they're each doing that. Except they're diving into the earth, which is Virgo. <laughs> um, so what is flying around in your life right now? There's so much powerful energy out there. There's so much to absorb. There's so much to learn. Virgo is about the details. You need to pay attention to the details. You can't just say, all right, shrug your shoulders and do whatever because it's talking to you. All of these planets are talking to each of us. Now, I'm particularly sensitive because it's what I do for a living. But, you know, I can tell you that if you listen, if you meditate, if you stay still and quiet, you're going to hear some interesting information. If you don't do that, you're still going to feel some sort of shift and you're going to see at the end of your week maybe that you've things are a little different, that things feel a little different than they did. Um it's not a murky energy. Virgo's pretty clear, but it also feels a little bit like, you know, if you don't pay attention to this energy, if you don't watch it, you might feel like nothing's happening. Um, and I say that because it's subtle, because it's, you know, one thing after another. It, it's not fireworks. It's dynamic, but it's not fireworks. You know, it's not... Uh, oh my goodness, what happened? It's not an eclipse where we're like drained afterwards and we're, we're connected to something like a live wire. It's more about the subtleties, Virgo to, to Taurus, Virgo to Capricorn, Virgo to you know, Jupiter and Neptune. And, and what's interesting is Mercury yesterday, which is in Virgo, which is its own sign, Mercury opposed Neptune. Now Jupiter's in its own sign, Neptune's in its own sign, Mercury was in its own sign. So lately, the last couple of days, flying energy, flying energy. Pay attention, catch it, listen to it, absorb it. It's talking to you, okay? Today, it's Jupiter and the sun. So the sun squares Jupiter, opens up the gate, the heart, uh, the evolutionary process of spirit um, between the sun squaring Jupiter and then in two days on the 10th, on Tuesday, the sun is going to oppose Neptune. So this is a very powerful time. Um, and then what's going to happen is that uh, eventually the sun is going to go on its way and try and Pluto, which won't be till Friday, this Friday, on the 13th. So the sun is going to try and Pluto, 3.38 p.m. on Friday, the 13th. So each of these planets as they make their journey through Virgo and touch all the outer planets, they have messages. And Jupiter is about abundance, and Neptune is about spirit, and what's going on in the T-square between the sun, Jupiter today, and then moving into the, the zone with Neptune the day after tomorrow. What's that about for you? What's happening? What did you learn? What part of your life force has been revealed. So there's some reveal coming at each time these planets make their spin through each of these, you know, dynamic relationships. The more dynamic ones are the squares in opposition. So you might really feel something and own something like last Wednesday when Venus opposed Neptune. Okay. Then yesterday, Mercury opposed Neptune. Then this Tuesday, the sun will oppose Neptune. That's when like, Neptune is, you know, where we get enlightened or we get fooled. But in this case, we're getting enlightened. We're getting information. So each time there's a layer of information that you're getting. Now tomorrow, Mars is going to try and Saturn. So now Mars is a little behind because Mars is slower than all the other three. So Mars is going to try and Saturn, make that flowing aspect. And that's nice because Saturn's in Capricorn and that's where Mars is exalted. It likes it there, but it's in Virgo. So it's doing some very calming, you know, focused work with Saturn. And then Mars is going to reach that T-square on Thursday. So they're all sort of overlapping one another. Venus, and then Mercury, and then the Sun, and now Mars. And then, you know, Mars is going to do the T-square thing. Thursday the 12th, Mars will square Jupiter. And then eventually Mars is going to oppose Neptune. But that's not going to happen for, like, the next day. It's going to take a couple days. So it'll square Jupiter on Thursday the 12th and then oppose 
Neptune on Saturday the 14th. So, very interesting. Very interesting. As Mars opposed Neptune that day, which is in its own sign, which is at 17 degrees of its own sign, we're going to have a full moon. The full moon is Virgo Pisces. So I expect that Mars, as it gets revved up on Thursday and goes into that T-square, it's going to touch the full moon on Saturday. So Saturday, even though the moon is, you know, in the sun are 21 degrees, we're, we're really watching that Mars hit the point of opposition with Neptune. And the sun, of course, will have opposed Neptune on Tuesday. And all of this is leading up to this full moon. And since the full moon is Virgo and Pisces, it's going to really highlight and show us what we've been learning all these two weeks. So start starting back with the new moon. And now then there's going to be a full moon because, you know, they're always two weeks apart. Wowie, what did you learn? What did you see? What did you absorb? What information has been given to you? What action do you need to take? And Mars is about action. So Mars is now going to try and Saturn tomorrow. And maybe there's like understanding of some real forward action you need to take. And then it's going to square Jupiter on Thursday. And then it's going to do that opposition to Neptune on Saturday. Well, there's action taking steps right there. Jupiter, Neptune, sure. Neptune isn't an action-oriented planet. But when we get, it gets entangled with Mars, yeah. Now you have to be careful because Mars and Neptune is a little bit tricky because Neptune and Mars um, are very strange in relationship with one another. Mars is action-oriented. Mars wants to be open and out and doing it right in your face. Mars is in your face. Neptune's behind your back. So remember that Saturday when we've got the opposition and you'll start feeling it on Friday, Mars is in your face, Neptune's behind your back. So if you're going to get into battle with someone, be very careful. If there's going to be an argument, if you need to confront someone, be very careful. And maybe it's not the best time to do that because Mars is the confrontational one. And in Virgo, it might be a little more pleasant and focused and saying, you know what, I think maybe we need to talk about this and, you know, maybe we should go over the details of this and blah, blah, blah. And, but Neptune, but it's, it's combining with Neptune. So maybe there's going to be a conversation and maybe there's going to be something that happens behind your back. And maybe there's a reveal about something that's going on behind your back. So maybe the right thing is to look for, you know, look behind you. See what's going on. Uh, search the energies around you. Is there something going on behind your back? Because this is very interesting energy that can reveal that. Mars is an action-taking planet. Remember that. Um, and so... You want to make sure that nothing's going on behind your back except normal things <laughs> that you don't care about. That nothing significant is going behind your back, going on behind your back. And as we look at the harvest moon um, on Saturday the 14th, that harvest moon is going to be connected to this Mars Neptune opposition. So. I can only hope that the light of the silvery moon is going to reveal things to people that they need to know. And that um, you focus this week. One of the focuses you should have this week is, you know, tell me what I need to know, what I need to do next, how I need to take action, what, what is the best way to take action, and, you know, in a subtle way. So if you're already feeling like you should be taking action in a subtle way, then you should do it. So Mars and Neptune can also be, and if it's not like someone stabbing you in the back or things going on behind your back and reveal, you know, what happens is information comes to you in the subtlest of ways. We speak to each other psychically on a regular basis. And we are all connected to one another in our dreams and, and our psychic experiences. If you need to, you know, listen to that, listen to your dreams then do that. If you need to contact someone who has been um, out of reach, this might be a good way to psychically contact them. This is 
a very powerful way to do that. So there, the energy is available there to do this, to contact someone out of reach. Um, so think about that. See what you need to do. Um, make contact where you need to. And so we have a lot of information flying at us. The, the Mercury and Venus portion of this uh, experience is going to be ending on Saturday because they're both going to enter Libra on Saturday. Now, Mercury is an analytical planet. It likes being in Virgo, but it'll go into Libra, and Libra's an air sign, so that's okay. Venus loves to be in Libra, so this is good. Um, Venus is going into her own sign. But, you know, Libra is a different energy. It's not Virgo. Libra is much more uh, aesthetic-oriented, and it's it's much more, um, you know, peacemaking. So we'll talk about that more next week. Um, so that's going to be an interesting, interesting ride. In the meantime, pay attention. This is, I can't stress it enough because today we had a lot of aspects, a lot, and they're still going on. You know, the moon is still, it's in Capricorn today. It's occulting Saturn. It's occulting Pluto. It's still doing that. If you feel like you can't get your hands around your own transformation, you're going to push through it. You got to push through it. You got to remember it's still there and it's going to happen. And you got to stay steady on all of this. Tomorrow, the moon is going to be void most of the day. It's going to go void 4.30 a.m. New York time or, or East Coast time, 2.30 a.m. Costa Rica time. And 5.24 p.m., it will go out of void and into Aquarius. And that's on the East Coast. Here we are in mountain time right now. That'll be 3.24 p.m. So anything that you need to do that's of great import tomorrow, if you need to reach out, it's Monday, you know, it's like, ah, got to get back on the trail you think about doing it later in the day or think about doing it on Tuesday. Don't make initial new contacts tomorrow. I'm going to call that new client. I'm going to apply for that new job. I know Sunday the paper comes out and you want to get the, the resume in. Well, then send it tonight, not tomorrow. <laughs> and know that they'll get it on a void moon tomorrow. So you might want to just wait till that void moon passes and it goes into Aquarius. Um, Moon is in Aquarius all day Tuesday. It's void all day Wednesday. There have been so many long void moons in these last couple weeks. It's amazing we can get anything done. So long void moon Wednesday. It goes void at 1.22 a.m. Uh, you know, in the middle of the night Wednesday and at Eastern time. And then... Thursday, it doesn't go back, it doesn't go out of void until 5.52 a.m., so almost 6 a.m. on East Coast time. That means it's been void for more than 24 hours. It goes into Pisces at 5.52 a.m. That's one long void moon. Forget Wednesday. Let Do your work. Do your laundry. Write in your journal. Observe things. Do things. It's a great day for healing. You know, Wednesday's a great day for healing because healing occurs really well on the void moon. So great. Do your healing work. Do your meditative work. Do eh, You know, it's an Aquarius. Do your thinking. Do your paperwork. That's fine. But um, what you want to do is you want to get uh, through like the voids with average work. You know, again, don't want to start something brandy new. Then on Friday the 13th, the moon is in Pisces all day, and we have those aspects, the sun trining Pluto. Um, Mercury and Venus are going to conjunct on Friday. This is all very exciting energy. Pay attention. Write things down. Observe. Venus and Mercury are going to conjunct. They're going to talk to one another. They're going to say, hey, what was your experience like going through the T-square? And what's your experience like going through that T-square and all those other planets and touching all the other planets? And they're going to confer with each other on Friday about how their experience has been. So you can collect your energy. Friday's a good day for it to pay attention to where you've been in these last two weeks. What's it like? This has been, this week has flown. I mean, we're halfway through September as of the end of next week. And, you know, I don't want to rush it. I mean, it's only the 8th. But... Think about it. You know, by the time we reach the end of this coming week, we're going to have a whole lot of experience that we've been doing since August 30th when we had that new moon. So 
Think about Venus and Mercury. Mercury, the planet of communication. Venus, the planet of artistry, of, of love, of relationships, of money. Mercury, the planet of intellect, of, of articulation, of writing, of speaking, of getting the message across. It's a powerful time to get the message across. And then Saturday will be the harvest moon. The harvest moon occurs, uh, you know, 1230 a.m. So it's really happening on Friday night. You know, as far as we're all concerned, we're going to look at the moon on Friday night and see it's full. And that will be, you know, if it's 1230 a.m. in East Coast time, it's 1038 p.m. here so I can watch it as it happens. And what's going to happen is the moon is going to go void. (laughs) Surprise! The moon is going to go void right after that. So when it goes void at, you know, 12.30 12.30 a.m. Eastern Time. It's going to be void till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So forget, you know, there's Saturday. Go do your grocery shopping. Um, it's going to go into Aries, uh, 6.32 p.m. And in the meantime, all those aspects are going to be happening. Mars, Neptune, Venus, and Libra, Mercury and Libra. All that's going to happen on Saturday. In the middle of the night, in the morning, all that while the moon is void. It's okay. Sunday the 15th, the moon will be in Aries. And uh, that's fine. It's going to go void in Aries next Monday at 12 noon Eastern time. So just, and then all day. So so we are in some long, long void moons. Um, and this is what happens when, uh, when there aren't a lot of planets at the end of a sign. This is what happens. So the voids are long. Um, and they're going to be long the following week too. So... Try to take advantage of the rest of today, of Tuesday, of Thursday, of Friday, and do the most you can on those days, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and, you know, and after those voids pass, you know, um, try to get through that, those void periods with, you know, not starting anything new. Um, Make useful time of it. Do your work. Focus on things. This is an interesting, fascinating time. I'd love to hear from people and their experiences. You can write to me at info at thegoldenastrologer.com. My website is thegoldenastrologer.com. Go visit it. It's brand new. It's all new branding. And my friends at Elastica here in Costa Rica redid the website, redid the branding, and did a beautiful job. So please go visit if you want to see me on Twitter, it's at Deb Astrology. On Instagram, it's at The Golden Astrologer. And write to me. Let me know if you'd like a session. You can book it on my website now. It's all right available right there on my website. Book it and it'll go right into my schedule. So I wish you an incredible, powerful, enlightening week. And I wish you the best week and use this energy wisely. Write it down, make note, and work with it. It's really good energy to work with. I thank you for listening, and this is Deb McBride. Have a good night and a pleasant week.